Morning everyone, I hope you're all having a lovely morning this fine sunny day. Uh, thank you for joining me for my, my my first Facebook Live ever. It's taken me a while to work out how to get, get on this morning, but we're here. So, um, yeah, this is a bit of a tryout to see how live item workshops will go. Um, and um, it would be great if if you find the time to comment underneath as we're going along but certainly if you'd like to share pieces that you write today in the comments under this video which I will be on the feed after the hour's up um, it will be great to see a bit of writing I'm going to have a go at the end um, to see if we can all contribute to um, one piece together but uh, more of that later so let's get started. So the, the theme of today's writing workshops is um, the streets, the streets where we live, and that can be streets that you live on now, um, streets that you've lived on in the past. I naturally gravitate to writing about my childhood, which perhaps tells me there's some a book there that needs to come out. But I'm going to get you to kick off with um, just a really short activity, maybe seven minutes. I've got my trusty timer today. Not such a loud one, well, I left the, the loud ticking clock over there. But, um, yeah, seven minutes on creating a list of homes you've lived in, streets that you've lived on, from your first home, the first home you can remember, to where you live now. So if you've got a piece of paper, I should find mine and a pen. And you'd like to spend six or seven minutes creating a list of places, streets that you've lived on. So I'm going to mute while I do mine. I think can I do that? Maybe not. If you hear noise, you'll have to excuse me. Um, I share a building with an office. And me here. <laughs> but anyway, seven minutes off you go. Streets where you live. Just a list. Just a list of places you've lived.
Hi Fran, sorry I've just seen your comment. We were just writing a list of um, places we've lived in. I'm sorry, we're gonna, we've are gonna. we actually got about one minute left to finish that. It's just a warm up. <laughs> and Catherine Green? Yeah, maybe it's take me just almost seven minutes thinking of. I did a bit of detail with some of my, the years that I lived in different streets. Um, and yeah, begun, begun filling it in with where the children were born. <laughs> Six streets in 30 seconds. Hey, that's good. That's very, you're a quick writer, Catherine. You obviously think um, more quickly than I do. But when you, I begin the list and then extra little bits get added in. So if you could just finish the list where you are. Um, as I say, it's just a quick activity to get us warmed up, really. If you haven't finished, because uh, some writers will write just a, a little bit, and I have writers in my... Oops, there's the clock stopping. Um, some writers in my groups will go off and, and write heaps about each, and some, some of my writers will um, not do the list and just concentrate on one thing. And whatever you choose to do is fine, as I say in all my videos. We're all individuals, the way we think and create are different. And the prompts here are just um, to to encourage you to be creative, really, and do whatever you want to do. So I've got a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm in my seventh home, varying amounts of time that I spent in all of them. And the ones that have the biggest pull for me are the one, the home that I was born in. I was actually born in my parents' bedroom in the days when you could be born at home. Um, and the the home that my children were born in, something fundamental about birth, obviously, in my in my creativity. Um, right, okay, let's have a quick, just a few quick good mornings. Good morning, hello, Helen, Sandy, Jenny, Hannah, Debs, Fran, Julia, Glenis, Alison Sullivan. Um, Sue Watson? <laughs> Sue Watson's got too many. Well, that would make an interesting story then, Sue. Um, Isabel, Eight Streets, we've had a chat about. And also we've got Lorna. Lorna's lived in the countryside most of her life with no streets as such. That's fine. You could write about houses, list the houses, what areas. And Helen said, I thought we were just making a list. You were right. You, I did say just a list, but um, you're free to expand it um, as you wish. As it often happened. I did intend making a list, but as I say, then I began suddenly remembering bits that if I don't write them down straight away, I forget. So that's the kind of mind I have. So you will have a list. It's really it's just really an activity to um, flex your fingers and get you thinking. Um, and you could carry on with that if that has um, piqued your interest and you quite like doing that activity you could carry on adding to that list or expanding that list later as you wish um, but as I was doing that I was thinking going through mine and jotting the bits of um, anecdotal memories around them I suddenly realised a seven chapter I could make that into a seven cha chapter little memoir of memories of each house and the key things that happen there. Um, people who write memoirs often structure, structure them around something. Um, Simon Armitage has written about gigs that he went to as, through his life and um, his name's gone. Nick Hornby wrote a memoir about football. Often people writing their memories look for something to hang it on to, uh, to, to pull a collection of different stories together and I could a, a list of places you've lif, lived could be a good one to to hang stories memories together okay but that's not the purpose of today although the purpose of today could be to create some memories that might fit into um, a piece that you might want to pull together what I was going to get you to do next is to draw a map
um, some interesting places that people have lived. Joy Joyce from the Peace Peak District. I lived in ten different areas. You would have some good memories there to record. Joy, <laughs> I'd look forward to reading those. Okay, yes, map. A map can be a really great way. Now I'm going to see if I can. Can I share this sort of? I'm going to give up trying. Um, there's um, a painting by um, the Irish artist Jack Yates. His brother was the poet Walter William, sorry, William Butler Yates. And um, Jack had painted um, a, a painting called Memory Harbour, which is um, which was um, a, his memories of an area that their grandparents had lived in when they were children and they visited a lot and it became um it's a conglomeration it's not um an actual to scale drawing but he in this painting he painted people that he could remember and statues and particular parts of the of the harbor and he called it memory harbor and then his brother william butler yates wrote about it later explaining what the picture had been about and that's a really good way to um to call forth memories now you might want to do a map, choose, choose a place from your list of places that you've lived, lived and draw a map of that area and as I say for me it's usually I delve back into childhood and, um, but it could be a different place, it could be in, in adulthood, it could be a place that you live in now and if I just show you the one that I did before with my writing group. So, um, this is, because when you're a child, your viewpoint is so small, isn't it? It's kind of bounded by um, the, the small amount of spaces you're allowed to go on your own. Um, and that's, a, excuse me. That little, um, that little area that you live in um, is your whole world, really. So I did a little sketch of the eight houses that were in the area that I lived. I grew up on um, an estate, a council estate that was built in the 1950s. Lots of families around us. Um, and as I sketched the map, I suddenly began to remember the names of our neighbours, some of which I'd forgotten completely, and little anecdotes about them. So, there is the beginnings of my map here. A little straight road. I've even got the door numbers on. Um, yeah, you could... Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. So, a, a quick sketch of an area that you lived in, maybe some of the neighbours around you. Um, I've got here bus stops, so we would cut through, there was a waste ground next to where we lived and we'd cut through the waste ground to get to the bus stop on the next road. So that was part of our boundary where the bus stop was. Um, my mother used to say we could play out front, you can play out front because you could in those days. But we weren't to go any further than Kyra's house, which was next to the lamppost. You can go to that lamppost up that way, and you can go to that lamppost up that way. That's it. That was that. That was the boundaries of that one particular age, and we knew our neighbours intimately in a way that, as an adult, I don't really know the neighbours around where I live now. And I don't know whether that's an age thing or it's a particular facet of the place that I live, probably. Or just as a kid, you're so nosy and you know absolutely everything and you're so observant. I don't know exactly what that is. That's a thought. You, think, you can think about that one. Anyone's got any thoughts on that, put them in the comments. So, I'm going to, again, I'm going to give you... I always go for seven minutes. <laughs> I'm going to try seven or eight minutes just to do a quick sketch of an area that you've lived in. And if, you, if it's a house in a place draw what was around it. You can draw whatever you like, just, yeah, it's not an art activity, so you can, don't worry about your drawing, whatever you want to do, nothing is, is wrong. 
a quick sketch of a place that you've lived in and then if the time's up in fact I might make it 10 minutes once you've sketched it if you've got people in and around your area see if you can jot some anecdotes about them things that you remember about them just notes because we'll, we're going to choose one shortly and expand it so I've put 10 minutes on the clock if you want to have a go at that a quick sketch of a place that you've lived some memories maybe of the boundaries and of people who lived around you Uh, we're just sketching an area that you will have you have lived in in the either now or in the past with um so there's one that I did houses that I lived in as a child with the people who lived next to me and the, things that you can remember around that area if it's a memory or things that are in your area now and I've been I've scribbled anecdotes about the neighbours that I remember living in the houses just a quick sketch, you've got five, uh, six minutes left.
Victoria is going to need a bigger piece of paper. It might take, um, I hope, hopefully I'll kick you off on an activity that will keep going for a while, Joyce. And that's fine, Pat, no worries. I say it's something you can return to and carry on filling in. Glad to hear you're enjoying it, Jenny. It's one of those um, activities, as I say, that grows and grows. <laughs> We've got um, just over a minute left. If you want to just be finishing off one aspect of your sketch, as I say, you can always come back to it. Actually had 11 minutes, so I've notched it up a minute extra. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to ask you now, so you can go back to your map and carry on. It is, Hannah, it is amazing how many memories you end up coming up with from such a small area that you lived in. And so, um, if, you're, if you're going back to childhood, or I'm sure that as children, we had a much stronger sense of what was around us. Maybe we noticed more. Maybe we got less in our brains that was um, taking up room in the brain. So we, we remember those things better. But the act of writing does... Uh, drawing, sorry, do, is a, a really good way of uh, accessing a different bit of your creativity and getting you to, to think of things... Right. <laughs> no, I'm 
I'm glad you're, you're with us rather than gardening, Val. I hope you get, get out in the garden shortly. And maybe the act of gardening will, will make, make you remember other bits that you can jot down. That, and I, again, I find that, that um, once I start this, when I, once I've told my brain to start calling things up, they keep popping back. And um, if you, I have at my table, as I walk past it to the kitchen and bathroom and everywhere, I have a bit of paper on it and I just jot things on as I go past which is no bad thing, with a brain at my age that tends to forget things. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get you to do, I have, we're halfway through already, wow, um, I've over planned as usual, but never mind, to write an anecdote, an anecdote about, I'm going to try and get two activities, two writing activities in before 12 o'clock. So, an anecdote about that place that you've just drawn, and it can be whatever you like, whatever you choose, something that's the, the strongest pull to you as you're writing that. And so this is an activity I've done lots and lots of times with different writing groups, and each time my, my um, creativity, my memory wants me to write a different thing. So I've got several different things, examples of mine that I could read you. Um, and which one to go with? I will go with, let's start with one. I'm going to uh, go with a, a piece that's um, about, uh, about the house that I lived in, or rather the garden. Um which shows this microscopic view that we used to have when we were little. So, a memory, and it's very rough, and I wouldn't expect the things that you write now to be fully polished pieces. Um, but, you know, just don't overthink things, just write down anything for now. You can always go back and polish them up. So here we go, This is I called this wheels for some reason, but a memory i'd be about eight of us playing out front you could in those days without fear of being abducted or run over by a steady stream of cars on that narrow road making by the steady stream of cars on that narrow road now making driving down it a nightmare and the constant need to find a gap to pull into when cars come the other way if this is rough i do apologize then, hardly anyone on the estate owned a car. Only two guys in our terrace of six, and both of those chose to rent one of the prefab garages a full ten-minute walk away. So the road was pretty much clear and was absorbed into our playground, running from the lamppost outside Kyra's house at one end and the, to the concrete fence panels of the waste ground at the other and anyone who trespassed without invitation was given sharp shrift and sent back down your end. I remember my father shouting that. Don't play at your own end. My memories framed by the top of the privet hedge that bordered the garden and blocked me from view of the house and the irregular, uneven jigsaw of the pavement on which we played. I knew every curbstone and concrete tilted edge slab of it grouted with rich worm cast soil and seams of silky moss. We knelt, rolled, chalked and felt over every crack, pattern and ant hole, reading their stories like braille. That's my strongest memory of childhood, I think, experiencing our environment so minutely, interrogating every smell, sound, colour and texture as if surveying for a map. Our world may have been much smaller then, but we knew every inch of it intimately. And then I go on to share a memory of um, my three older brothers and a big gang of their friends and how we made go-karts and we tied them all together and ka-chunk, ka -chunk down the street, pushing each other along. So that was that was a memory of um, a very close. If, you, if it was a film, it would be a close up. The camera would be very close on one particular part of that environment, and 
looking at it intimately. Now here's another bit that I wrote a different time about some of the anecdotes that I'd written about the people in, in the houses around. I'm going to have to remember to change the names as I read this one. Okay, um, David Smith. David Smith, Big David, as my parents called him, to distinguish him from his son, Young David, was a big, muscled, vest-wearing thug of a man with a foul mouth and a glass eye, fixed angrily at the world. His other eye probably did too, but the glass one... But when in close proximity to him which we did everything possible to avoid, our young eyes would be drawn to the glass one for one quick look and then look away in embarrassment and fear. Everything about him induced fear, not least the rumours that he knocked his daughters about. His daughters and his slim, dark-skinned wife. Their house sided onto the patch of waste ground between our road and the next, its green diamond-shaped wired fence affording a view into their garden and as you as you reached it sorry handwriting into their garden and as you reached it their back door open into the outhouse we would scuttle quickly past as we drew level with it anxious not to hear his booming voice inside or catch a glimpse of the terrible lives his children the same age as we were were said to be enduring inside so then yeah and then i go on to talk about um an incident where my dad stood up to him about something but i will leave that now because otherwise you won't have time to write we have 23 minutes left so Choose a memory from, thank you Jenny, that was, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, choose a memory from the little sketch that you've done, either an anecdote or um, a view of you in that place. And let's try 15 minutes and then we'll, I'm going to put 12 on and see how we go. You can let me know if that's not long enough. This is very much a trial and error this workshop to see how much time you need. Off you go. 12 minutes and I'll check in with you in 12 minutes. I will write too.
got about one minute left if you want to just draw the bit that you're writing to an end or not carry on if you want wish my sentence and I'm going to do Activity. Again, I've gone down a completely different route with mine. Ended up choosing um, a set of neighbours two doors down whose front garden was immaculate. I won't read it to you, but I might type it up and share it in the comments later. Their front garden was immaculate and ours was a meadow because mm, we, my dad was a very busy man <laughs> and had six children. and would come in from his job in an engineering factory and then help my mum actually look after his kids and the, the neighbours I've written about who wouldn't even be given a council house nowadays because they have their children um, maybe maybe there's some link there between gardens that are like meadows and gardens that were immaculate and People who have time. I don't need to explore that one. So, Jenny, I'm glad you really enjoyed that. <laughs> Jenny Down and Jenny Smith got lost in the writing. That's good. That's it's wonderful when that happens. Um, so, Helen, as an only child, I was pl out playing in the back garden. The council sent me shared a hedge with the neighbour who had two older boys were also playing out. I think it was snowing. I was making cakes and other tasty treats in the old... circular washing up bowl. The boy shouted over the hedge to me and I passed the mixing bowl over on the assurance that they would add chocolate to my mixture. The chocolate was obtained by holding the bowl next to the rusty clothes post and rubbing their cup hands up and down <laughs> so the flakes of rust adorned my snowy cake mixture. The bowl was duly returned so I could continue adding these and stirring with a stick. That's wonderful. I can't click like on these because I'm actually in the wrong thing at the minute but I will go back once I'm back on my own Facebook page. That's a beautiful story. And again, I've forgotten all about that but yeah. You're so at one with nature when you're a child, aren't you? You, hand, you roll your hands up and get your hands in it. Got some people writing about shops. Look forward to reading those. Hi, Stuart. I hope you um, managed to get some ideas down. So, Pam West. Wow, I didn't know I could write. Great. You've made my day, Pam. I love it when people say that to me. One of my... my aim in life is to get people who don't think they can write to write because you can <laughs> and if you can't write it down record it on a voice recorder it's important for us all to share our memories as best we can for people who follow us 
Right, okay. What I'm going to get you to do, we've just got six minutes left. As I said, I've definitely overplanned writing activities. But I will type those up and um, put them up on my website and then when they're up I'll put a link under this video so if you want to download the, the rest of the prompts that I put together of things you can do with these activities um, then it, it's there for you one of the things is um, writing about a walk through a walk through in fact I'll read that one of the things I get uh, my writers to do is to, to um, write about a walk through the streets that you've written about and some of my writers I'd like to share their writing if you don't mind some of my writers it was walking to school so I've got um, David in my writing group David P wrote about being at the bus stop and he called it misunderstandings when I was about seven I was waiting at the bus stop on the way to school when a younger child started crying but we don't but he won't accept them, she cried to her mother. Of course he will, Mum replied. And he did. The child was worried that the bus conductor wouldn't accept four farthings for the penny bus fare. Thinking back, it now occurs to me that a farthing was one hun nine hundredth and six... I'm going to get this wrong. Was one nine hundred and sixtieth of a pound. OK, that's... um. Decimalisation came in when I was seven, almost seven, so I just won't quite remember that. So. <laughs> um, I've got one, two, two about Tracy, this one, walking to school. Tracy wrote, the wind was howling up a gale, but I had to start my journey to school. Closing the front door, I followed closely, my mum holding tight to, to my coat. My walk to school always felt long. We walked out of our snug little cul-de-sac and crossed the main road, walking past cherry trees whose wares had been pillaged by the wildlife. We soon joined others on the same journey, holding tight to their hoods whilst their mothers held their bags. We soon came to a main road where my favourite weeping willow stood, its branches being battered by the wind. I always pause a little and stroke a low hanging branch as I walk by, even today. The journey nearly done, we carried on and up and over the hill as more families joined the pilgrimage. I saw my best friend and her sisters playing chase on their way ahead of me, their hair flying freely without a care. Before long we came to the main road with the lollipop lady, whose protective stance always ensured we arrived safely at the gates. Her lollipop was being forced to stand upright with the battering it was receiving from the wind. Very like today. <laughs> At last the gates loomed in front and I caught up with my friend. Giving my mum a kiss and hug goodbye, we both skipped to the playground and waited for the bell. So that's a walk through the estate to go to school. Three minutes. Ellie wrote... Walking to school, every day my cat Harry would walk with me up the jitty to school. I'd see him at 10.30 playing in the field whilst I had break time, and he'd be there waiting for a bite of leftover school dinner cake at 1.30 lunch. At 3.30 in the afternoon, at the end of school, Harry would greet me, brushing himself against my leg, and we'd walk back home together. And I've got um, Jeanette Wright's about walking to school in the wall and the vegetables that people grow in their front gardens. Rows of bean sticks over the hedges, tall bristle sprout plants and best of all the gorgeous scent of sweet peas. Calling for kids on the way we were quite a posse and the, oh, it's not the war time. And the conversation was probably a little different to kids nowadays. Pat Boone, Elvis Presley, TV programmes, clothes, before arriving at the school door and the all-seeing, ever-watchful, most scary woman I ever knew who could strike fear into your whole body, Miss Thompson. Okay, um, I haven't got time to read the others, but um, some of those are on a, a 
a website that I have, which you'll find details of on my website, um, if you want to read some other examples. So, I will put up the other prompts that we haven't got to use today on my website, and people can download this and have a go with those if they want to. But the final thing I was going to suggest that we do is see if we can create one piece all together. Choose a line in anything that you've written today. It could be an anecdote about your neighbours, it could be a description of the place that you've written. And type it in the comments, just one line, one sentence from your pieces today. You don't have to do it straight away. And at some point, probably the weekend maybe, I will go and see what we've got and pull them all together and see if I can pull them into a found poem. A found poem is where you just take whatever comes up and see what you have, basically. Thank you, Alison Sullivan. I'm glad you um, enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny Smith and Jenny Down. <laughs> But uh, yeah, hope to see you next time. I'll be back. I'll be back now. I know how to do live zooms. I really enjoyed this this morning. So thank you all. See you again soon.